It's Don here from the board. Thanks for coming along and checking out this video. So today we're going to be having a look at the C Micro. The C Micro is a Pro Micro replacement uh, microcontroller board, daughter board, whatever it is that you want to particularly call it. And it is effectively a drop in replacement for the Pro Micro with a USB C connector. Now, this particular sample of the C Micro was sent to me courtesy of K uh, Custom KBD in Australia who has been working with the people who actually developed it. So before I open up the package, before I give it a flash and see what it looks like and what it does, let's just have a look at the listing. Now they actually sent it to me to get my feedback on it and they had no expectations at all for a review or anything of that nature or promotion. So me doing this, uh, you're going to see that it says it's a paid promotion item. I flagged that only because of how YouTube's policies are and it's a little bit weird because it's, it's hard to distinguish exactly for me what counts as paid promotion or not, but simply because they sent it to me and I get to keep it, I'm going to count it as such. However, Custom KBD had no expectations of me to do this at all. They just wanted the feedback on the side and when I said, you know, I might do a video, they were like, whatever it is you want to do, you do it. So, you know, I want to say thank you very much Custom KBD and Anstar for actually reaching out to me and sending it. So, this is the actual listing. You can see it's $20 Australian, okay? So, that's, I believe, in Australian dollars. It looks pretty good, like it's a nice compact form factor just like a standard Pro Micro but it's got that USB-C connector on it and you can see mid-mounted USB-C port, compatibility with all Pro Micro powered keyboards, it uses the 32U4 that everyone's really familiar with and it's got an onboard reset button which the Pro Micro does not have. So what I'm going to be doing is I have a Pro Micro. I'm going to reflash it using my current version of Toolbox, which is what you can see here. And I'm going to load it with my DRMP default hex. Now I'm going to plug my Pro Micro into the DRMP and use that just as a correlating uh, position for the pins that I want to short to test that. And then I'm going to flash the C Micro plug that in, short the same pins, and see what that output is going to look like. Because as a straight plug and play replacement for the Pro Micro, it should deliver exactly the same outputs uh, as a standard Pro Micro flashed with the same hex. So that's why I've got that there ready to go. And I should probably also open up Switch Hitter. And then that way I'll be able to show whatever it is that is occurring. Okay. So, let's get down to the desktop. So, it's in this padded bag. It's got my address on the other side. Uh, I haven't opened it, as you can see. And uh, we'll get to that very shortly. But just for a quick review. So, this is the DRMP. It's a rotary macro pad that I've developed. There will be a video link somewhere. Uh, Pro Micro driven. And you'll see, as per usual, how I build a lot of my PCBs, if the focus will work. I have the row and column assignments put on the PCB. So you can troubleshoot that. So what I'm going to do is, my standard Pro Micro, which this one was actually socketed, so it'll fit into this particular one. I'm going to flash that. I'm going to socket it. And then we're going to short the pins against what those positions are. And then when we do that flash, we'll, it won't be socketed because I'm not going to be soldering it yet, but we'll be able to just short the pins and check against that. So here is the DRMP. I'm going to find a, uh, a connector for it. There it is. So green light is on. It's already been uh, flashed with something previously, which was when I tested it for the BMP and you'll see so as you say as you can see it actually says that it's the BMP that's being connected but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set that to auto flash 
it is a 32U4, that's the DRMP default, and I am going to go and short that. Theoretically, did that, did I not short it sufficiently enough? There we go. Okay, so now it's giving it a flash. Okay, AVRS dudes is done. Device disconnected, and now you'll see it's connected with the DRMP. So I'm going to unplug that. Then we're going to uh, socket that in. Not that I'm really going to be using the uh, pad itself, but only there for the frame of reference. So there's the desktop, and I'm going to reposition stuff. Okay, so that's now going to go back in. Okay, so the HID device is now reading, and it should come up and show the DRMP is back in position. And now, back to switch hitter, and I'm going to short row zero column two, and you'll see it triggers the two. And then if I go uh, column two, and it'll trigger all of that arrangement because that's how I would built it. So all of those are triggering because it was just set up as a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in a three by three arrangement. Okay, so you can see that bottom uh, three, well, column two, row two position is, is triggering that nine. So that's what we're going to be running the basis off. So let's just unplug that and let's open the package. Okay, so there is that, and not even quite sure what <laughs> it's KBD fans. Oh, okay, that's cool. Thank you. Uh, I must have either not remembered about it, but what we've actually got here. Uh, is it looks like they are I think they're stabilizer wire clips uh, I'm gonna have to have a look at these separately at another time so here we go here is the replacement C micro what I do find really interesting is uh, it didn't actually come with any headers now that's not a problem for me because Incidentally, I actually have a spare packet of headers here uh, <laughs> from some other activities and projects. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to increase the, the desktop screen again so we can just have a look at that. And we'll be able to give it a, a good, I suppose, close-up comparison to our Pro Micro. So from the top down, here we go. So C micro versus Pro micro. You can see the form factor is very similar. I, I mean, the pin positions should be exactly the same, otherwise it's not going to work as a drop-in. But the actual uh, PCB size is just a fraction smaller by the looks of it, maybe. Not by very much. It uses the smaller chip from my version, so you can see on the left-hand side how large that 32U4 is, and on the right-hand side it's a smaller form factor of that 32U4. Uh, we can see, what is it? It's 2040E, whereas the other side is 2005E. So it's just a different version of that. You've got that reset button on the bottom right-hand corner, and everything else looks uh, pretty hunky-dory. Now, what they've also done with the socket, if you can see it in the focus, is it's actually partially mounted in the wafer so you'll see it actually reduces the height of the build overall in the sense that depending on which side you mount the header pins 
your socket is not necessarily going to sit as high. Now, the Elite C version 4 does something very similar to this, where they've actually got that mounted in that wafer layer. So that's actually really cool. And then on the back, oh, that's really neat. We've got the silk screen that shows the name C Marco, and it actually has the pin names with the standard sort of QMK pin outputs, as opposed to just the pin number assignment, which is really useful. That's one of the things with using QMK and something like the Pro Micro is that it's not obvious on what the pin names are and doing it this way is actually much more intuitive for the purposes of a keyboard. Now, I know that these assignments are used for other things as well if you're in the Arduino sort of space, but um, you know that's what I'm most familiar with, the actual pin assignments. So, let's plug this in. Now, this is a USB-C cable from an Anpro 2. I actually don't have a lot of USB-C devices, so whenever I need to do something with USB-C, I pull this out of the Anpro 2 <laughs> box. <laughs> okay, so let's just uh, plug that in. Nice, good, firm click. And then on this side, it's going to go into my USB extender. Ooh, purple. Purple diode. Okay, now, if I'm going to reduce this down a little bit, what? we can see on the toolbox, it actually says HID device was disconnected, which is the DRMP that was flashed earlier. So right now, it doesn't actually recognize anything. And if I press the reset button, nothing's really happening. So, oh, whoops. There we go, okay. Because I still had auto flash on there, pressing that, it's actually done what we were gonna do anyway. And you can see it actually checked that the memory was empty and then it went straight into DFU and it checked that it was empty, it programmed it, flashed it, validated its success, and now it reads as the DRMP. And you can see I have not plugged this Pro Micro back in at all. So I'm going to disconnect that and let's plug it in again. And now, bam, straight off the bat, it's come back up as the DRMP, which is awesome. So let's go back to switch header. Let's clear it. Let's turn off QMK so I don't accidentally do anything wacky. And let's put that back into the rotation position as it was before. And it should just be all the pins on the right hand side of the actual controller that I should be able to start to short. And I'll get those. Yeah, there we go. We've got a six. We got the five, and there we go. So you can see that just running through there, it's actually kicking it all as it should be. So, what does that say? That says that this baby works straight off the bat, and boom, fantastic. Now, I think it's fantastic because you've got the option, it, it costs a little bit more, sure, than a Pro Micro, you know, about double the cost, depending on where you get your Pro Micro from, at least in Australia. Uh, it's a little bit more even then if you get it from places like AliExpress or Taobao if you buy your Pro Micros in bulk, but right now we're seeing more and more options for going to a USB-C device because, well, obviously the USB-C cable and its mechanical strength, the ease of not having to worry about stuff coming loose as much, and orientation of plugging in inconveniences and things like that. You know, a lot of people are moving towards that USB-C. So having a drop-in device that allows you to do that replacement is fantastic. Thumbs up. Okay, I think that's it. There's not really much else to say, but it works. It looks good. It's got a great silk screen, very helpful pinout details on it, as we had a look just before, and very, very easy to use. I guess the only thing is, if you were to get this, um, it would be nice if 
it actually comes with headers. Now, I don't know if you buy this, if it will come with headers or not, but you can always purchase them. They're, they're relatively easy to get. They're standard 2.54 pitch um, headers. You can buy them in big packets and just snap them off in 12s or whatever it is that you want. So yeah, nice and easy. So that is the C Micro courtesy of Custom KBD. If you like this kind of stuff, um, you know, head over and get one, support them. They're relatively new in Australia, but doing great guns for the community as well. And if you like this kind of content, if you like the kind of stuff that I build, that I review and check out and talk about, please, of course, hit that like button down below. Hit that subscribe button if you are not already subscribed to this channel. And of course, that bell notification if you want to get a notification for whenever I have new videos. That's it. That's a wrap. Thanks for coming along and checking out this video. And, of course, as usual, until next time, happy clacking.